A very good evening to all brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. So today is 29 October 2024, Tuesday class. So as usual, we will be continuing our sharing from this book, The Wonderful Dhamma Lotus Flower Sutta. Let us compose our mind, develop the Sada Virya, then mindfully we shall commence the puja chanting. Namo ben si si jia mo ni fo. Namo ben si si jia mo ni fo. Namo ben si si jia mo ni fo. Namo guan si yin pu sa. Namo guan si yin pu sa. Namo guan si yin pu sa. Namo a mi to fo. Namo a mi to fo. Namo a mi to fo. Namo mi la fo. Namo mi la fo. Namo mi la fo. Namo yao si fo. Namo yao si fo. Namo yao si fo. Namo pu sien pu sa. Namo pu sien pu sa. Namo pu sien pu sa. Namo di san wang pu sa. Namo di san wang pu sa. Namo di san wang pu sa. Namo fo pu sa. Namo fo pu sa. Namo fo pu sa. Arahang sama sam buddho bhagawa. Buddhang bhagawantang abhiwa demi. Suakato bhagavata dhammo dhammang namasami Supatipano bhagavato saokasango sanghang namami Namo atasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo atasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo atasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Buddhang saranang gachami, Dhammang saranang gachami, Sanghang saranang gachami, Dutiampi buddhang saranang gachami, Dutiampi dhammang saranang gachami, Dutiampi sanghang saranang gachami, Tatiyam pi bedang saranang gachami, Tatiyam pi damang saranang gachami, Tatiyam pi sanghang saranang gachami, Panati patau iramani sika padang samadiyami. Adi na da na we ramani sika padang samadhi ami kami su mica cara we ramani sika padang samadhi ami musa wada we ramani sika padang samadhi ami. Sura Meraya Majapama Datana Veramani Sikapadang Samadhyami We will continue our chanting from Padipa Puja onwards. Ganda Sarapa Dithena Dipena Tamadang Sina Diloka Dipang Sambudang Pujayami tamo nodang, ganda sambara yutena, dopena ang sugang hina, pujaye pujani ang tang, pujabajana mutamang, 
วันนาคันดากุโนเพตังเอตังกุสุมาสันตตินปุจายามิมุนินดาสสิริปาดาสโรโรเฮปุจเจมิบดังกุสุเมนาเนนะปุณเนนะมเตนะเชโหตุโมคังปุปังมิลายาติยาตาอิดังเมกายโยตัตตายาติวินาสบาวังอาทิวาเสตุโนบันเตปานิยังปาริกาปิตังอานุคัมพังอุปาดายะปาทิกันหาตุมุตะมังอาทิวาเสตุโนบันเตปาลีปาริกาปิตังอานุคัมพังอุปาดายะปาทิกันหาตุมุตะมังอาดิวาเสตุโนบันเตโบจานังปาริกาปิตังอานุคัมปังอุปาดายะปาทิกันหาตุมุตะมังวิชาณาชานปุจาเอสเปรชันเบสออนอันเดอร์สแตนดิ่งออฟเดอะสิกนิฟิเคนซ์ออฟดิสปุจาออฟเรนส์สิกนิฟิเคนซ์ออฟเรนส์ออฟไลท์ May this offering of light to the Buddha brings forth the causes and conditions to illuminate our mind and help arise the needed clarity and understanding to dispel all darkness or ignorance therein. Significance of offering of water. May this offering of pure, clear, cool water lead us to the pure, clear Dhamma that cools and doses off the fires of all defilements within our mind. Significance of offering of incense. May our morality, virtue, and understanding shine forth far and wide, just like the fragrance of this incense, which we are offering to the blessed one, who is perfect in wisdom and virtue. Significance of offering of fruits. May this offering of fruits remind us of the Dana Parami of generosity. And the fruits of our karma, so that we will diligently strive on with heedfulness to attain the path and fruition soon as possible. Significance of offering of flowers. May this constant offering of flowers to the Blessed One strengthen our faith and constantly remind us of the impermanence of this body, so that we will diligently and sincerely. Strive on to cultivate sila samadhi and panya, leading to ultimate liberation, the bond free nibbana. Making of overall aspiration by the power of all these merits, born of these offerings, may our spiritual faculty of s a d a v i r y a s a t i samadhi and panya be further strengthened. Until they become balas or power, then sharing and transfer merits to all beings. May these merits be shared and transferred to all beings without exception, especially to those who have the condition and affinity to receive them. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Just remember the four support. The first three support are very important. Relax, maintain awareness, then stabilize the awareness. When we develop the relaxation, it to enable us to have a complete relaxed body and mind. So. Every mind state that arises within our physical and mental processes, body and mind, we relax into it. We feel ourselves soothingly relax, at ease, without thought. Hmm. Then we just need to maintain the inner awareness. The awareness is a nature within us that can be aware of what arises within our six s e n s e s So upon contact 
of mind with the respective sense object and the sense basis like the physics experiment the light bulb lights up means you become conscious of that particular sense base it's just like our eye we can become conscious of seeing then our ear we can become conscious of hearing similarly conscious of smell taste tactile and thought process so this extender when it pick up whatever sense data to trigger off the respective sense door consciousness our awareness nature inside normally will not stop at the awareness is straight away perceived then retrieve to memory then your views opinion conditioning stir the mind and create thought proliferation or what we call heedless thinking or habitual reaction stirring of the mind so to develop the awareness based meditation is to, to stop all this habitual movement or what we call proliferation of thought so what happens is at the moment of contact between our sense bases our conscious mind and the sense data it will trigger off the respective sense door consciousness experience so when it arises like the buddha say in the seeing is only the seeing consciousness or in the hearing is only the hearing consciousness there is no egoic mind or atta to see or hear so awareness based meditation is to develop the ability to be aware just like the light bulb lights up just aware means in the seeing is only the consciousness you the awareness nature conscious before the perception before the thinking before the stirring of the mind so relax maintain awareness then whatever arise aware finish don't allow it to continue the thinking just aware if it's because of habitual tendency you need to perceive just acknowledge it perceive stop no need to allow it to continue because not important not so real all your thought process they come and they go no more they are only what we call momentary arising and passing away and because of the Patija Samopada dependent origination law that decide how the mind function the Avijja Pachya Sankara all those things the dwelling before you have the Dhamma understanding the mindfulness and the awareness you cannot understand what is going on so you develop through habits habitual tendency or through your conditioning belief system your views your opinion that you accumulated as you go through life so all this is the reason why normal people think a lot they hardly aware they cannot be with the moment in silent inner awareness to experience life to actually live life to be aware of what is going on within life within the form of mind every moment of consciousness away no need to know don't try to know don't try to do anything maintain awareness so first support relax into every mind state that arise within the body and mind then be at ease then maintain awareness whatever arise within the sixth sense door away finish don't continue don't let it proliferate okay then continuously develop this until it become very stable until most of the time you don't think you just away 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 so the only danger is 
people fall into a sleepy state. Especially if you do lying down meditation, you tend to doze off or sleep or rest. Uh, initially, it's okay. You maintain awareness. Then what happens is even you try to like fall asleep or go into the uh, relaxed state of like sleepiness or your mind from the conscious mind enters the subconscious and the unconscious but as you go through that phase what happens is our body is conditioned to snore because when you don't regulate your breathing your breath will automatically develop a form of like vibration it's like there is a snoring so when the snoring arrives yeah, means you are about to go into the unconscious or the subconscious means you are resting you are going to sleep yeah. so to sleep is to go into the unconscious and the subconscious so what happens is when it snore it trigger off the awareness again then you become aware the moment you become aware the snoring stop yeah that is how you develop it so initially let it occur snore that vibration actually wake you up you become aware again so continue to train yourself and develop awareness until this awareness is very stable inside you yeah. Once you can do that, means you have the third support, stabilizing the inner awareness. So initially, relax, then maintain awareness, then stabilizing the inner awareness. And when you can do that very well after some period of training, then you can move on to the fourth support, where you maintain awareness and stay at your heart area. Uh, heart area. Then just allow the awareness to move by itself. Yeah. You can detect any vibration around your heart area or even your heartbeat or what. Silently allow it to be there. Don't do anything. Just let the awareness and the movement become one. Or the vibration and the heartbeat and the awareness become one. Means in harmony means let the awareness and the movement move in harmony and synchrony if you can do that then you become very calm very peaceful but there is mindfulness or awareness of that vibration of that movement when your mind stabilizes the awareness stabilize until it can be with the vibration or with your breathing it means you have stabilized your sati. Your sati and the phenomena that you are aware of is moving in tandem as one. And that is the real sati. Not the normally one that involving the thought. The thought is trying to be aware. That one is thought-based, different. This one is without thought, just the awareness. And whatever phenomena that arise, it is aware and is in harmony. So it can be the breath, the breath, the breath, the breathing in and the breathing out. You can be aware of it. Or any vibration around your heart area that you can detect. Then you let it be, let it be, until the vibration become more and more subtle more and more subtle on its own it will become more and more subtle and more and more quiet then let the awareness move wherever it wants to go let it go let it develop its own movement so that fourth support is trust t-r-u-s-t trust your nature to be aware don't interfere with your thought don't try to know don't try to do anything just relax maintain awareness and let the awareness develop the movement that is the fourth support you can do that then you will progress you will one day 
or suddenly or maybe five ten minutes it will stabilize until it become very quiet very still until finally like there is no movement at all whatever object of meditation that your awareness is able to be aware of will become very very subtle very fine even the breathing or the heartbeat or the vibration it become very quiet oh, yeah. then finally like no more movement like there is no thought nothing it's just that tranquility that stillness of mind that pure awareness nature yeah. you can realize that i will rejoice yeah. sadhu do you where that is your true mind your silent mind then later on when you come out of the meditation or while you are inside you can find out and inquire who are you what are you without thought who are you what are you yeah. and what is that thing that is capable of awareness without sense data where there is nothing to trigger of the six sender and yet there is a quality of mind we call the essence of mind that can be aware of silence of tranquility of stillness yeah. that is your true mind your pure awareness nature yeah. so allow that to stabilize then when you are able to do that over a period of time the mind will enter sati when the mind enters sati that time any movement or activity within your form and mind is like magnified magnified and you become very calm very peaceful very tranquil inside uh, you can do that means you are progressing very well then when you come out of the meditation later on it's like you suddenly realize your mindfulness has become different your mind which has entered sati is able to pick up all of the activity that arise after you come out of the meditation especially your kaya initially every action every movement is in sati then your seeing is in sati your hearing is in sati the smell taste tactile and even the arising of thought you can see the slow motion flow everything become like very clear that's why when you are with sati you are hateful you are mindful you are without thought and you can see all this you can understand all this movement then how you function as a human being you will also understand then you were within the awareness nature the silent mind observe what is going on within your form and mind every movement every activity every sense perception what happened you will come to know and through that you understand clearly who are you what are you and how you become emotional fearful how thought arise how it condition emotion and all your activity of mind how they arise and they pass away following the law of dependent origination everything become very clear that's how you develop the wisdom to awaken to realize the true dhamma as taught by the buddha so seeing the link of the paticca samuppada is very important then you understand what is thinking how thought arise and you also understand that there is no thinker behind the thought everything is naturally arising and passing away following this law of paticca samuppada dependent origination so all this can be understood okay i'll let you meditate on your own 
Then I will set the alarm now for 30 minutes. You all can slowly, mindfully come out of the meditation. Yeah? Then we will turn the basics of the chanting walk. We will do the invocation to the devas. Invocation to the devas in this universe, in the entirety. Let the dainties or devas come here. Let them hear the good teachings of the king of sages, which gives heaven and release Nibbana. This is the time to listen to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. This is the time to listen to the teaching. Samantha Chakawali Su Atra Gachan to Devata Saddamang Muni Rajasa Sunantu Sakabokadang Dhamma Sunan Kalo Ayang Badanta Dhamma Sunan Kalo Ayang Badanta Dhamma Sunan Kalo Ayang Badanta Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Atasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Iti Peso Bhagawa Arahang Sama Sambuddho Vijajara Sampano Sugato Loka Vidu Anuttaro Purisadamma Sarati Sattva Deva Manosanang Buddha Bhagavati Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sandetiko Akaliko Ehipaseko Opanaiko Pajyatang Veditabo Vinohiti Supatipano Bhagavato Saukasango Ujupatipano Bhagavato Saukasango Nyayapatipano Bhagavato Saukasango Samichipatipano Bhagavato Saukasango Yadidang Jatari Purisa Yukani Atta Purisa Pugala Isa Bhagavato Saukasango Ahuneyo Pahuneyo Dakineyo Anjali Karaniyo Anutarang Punyang Ketang Loka Sati Sadu 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 We will continue from page 646 eh? mm. Okay Volume 4 Chapter 3 yeah? A Parable Commentary by Tibetaka Master Shenhua. Hmm. I regard all you lay disciples or lay people equally, no matter who you are. I am not demanding perfection, nor am I insisting that you improve instantly. But I hope that you will gradually improve yourself and get rid of your fault. So this one is regarding cultivation. Eh? Mm. 
You should know that I am deeply concerned for all of you and that I watch over you because Shen Hua is such a Zen master or what we call Mahayana tradition uh, teacher. He has very great vow and he really intend well to make sure all his disciples yeah, understand the teaching and put it into practice and cultivate well. So what he wants people to understand is he has a vow. <laughs> he said not until all his disciple has attained or perfected themselves to realize the Samasambuddhahood of perfect enlightenment, he will not attain his own perfect enlightenment. And he always jokingly said, please, he said, have mercy on me so that you do not create condition for him to stagnate. He said, if you don't cultivate and develop the perfection, then it will impede him. Yeah, he has to wait, wait very long. Then he always mentioned that you should at least yeah, sincerely cultivate and develop the understanding, then put it into practice. That's why in the initial part, yeah, so you go down a bit, he mentioned, yeah, I do not, like, I hope you will gradually progress and get rid of your fault because he does not insist that you improve instantly. It means immediately after you hear that teaching, you must cultivate until you perfect it. He said, no, he said, you can do it at your own pace gradually, but sincerely, diligently. Then you should know that he is deeply concerned for all of us, which is very true, and that he constantly watch over you. Hmm. Then he said, he worry about your fault more than his own, because he know not all disciples or uh, those who take refuge under him are serious. Yeah. That's why he is more worried that you do not keep to the practice. Then, then he explained why, he said, I hope that all of you will be better than me. I hope that you will blaze the trail of Buddhism in the West and be a role model and pioneers in Buddhism. Don't look upon yourself like me. Hmm. He were to speak about the Dhamma in detail. There are countless and limitless Dhamma. And so it is said, all Dhammas are the Buddha Dhammas. As long as you understand it, it is the Buddha Dhamma. When you don't understand it, it is still the Buddha Dhamma. It's just that you do not understand it yet. Now that you have understood a bit of the meaning of the Buddha Dhamma, you should go ahead and seriously cultivate it. Do not be sloppy about it. The sound hearer or Savaka, this group of children, all have their own path and Dhamma practices in the past. But they were all provisional teachings, not the ultimate teaching. So in the Dhamma Flower Assembly, the ultimate teaching is revealed. The Dhamma that I have told you today is also the ultimate Supreme Vehicle teaching. So under this Sutta, he brings out the ultimate Supreme Vehicle teachings because the initial provision uh, teachings uh, initial cultivation to prepare all these 
uh, groups of cultivators, the sound hearer, the particular Buddha, then finally the Bodhisattvas. So these three groups, he started with the provisional teachings, which is his basic teaching, or what we call the essential teachings of the Buddha. Means the essence of his initial teaching that can bring about wisdom in the here and the now to liberate oneself from ignorance, avijja, and can develop the attainment of all the stages of sainthood. First stage of sainthood, second stage of sainthood, third stage of sainthood, leading to finally arahantaship. So these are the sainthood way. The Buddha call it in Pali, Sotapanashe, Sakadagami, Anagami, and Arhantaship. So these are the provisional teachings, but they are very important. You need to understand them in order to free from suffering. Hmm. But then, the further teaching, which is the Bodhisattva way and the Supreme Vehicle teaching, is about the cultivation to become Samasamuddha, the perfection. And that training is very extensive. And that training has a lot more than just understanding the essential Dhamma to awaken. Because that aspect of training covers the perfection of all the ten perfection that need to be covered so that you have all the extensive understanding to teach and to take across living being not only your own form and mind to realize the sainthood way that's why all these are very important then the Buddha continued he said no one should be afraid of making mistakes. I always remember this. In cultivation, do not fear mistake. Hmm. You know, everything that is new, you got to go through. And when you go through, sometimes you lack the wisdom aspect or you lack the experience and the understanding. You tend to initially make mistakes, but don't worry. That's why he said, no one going this way should be afraid of making mistakes. In fact, mistakes are your teacher. Just be afraid. You will learn from them and change. If you do not correct your mistake, not only do I have no way of helping you, even Sakyamuni himself, cannot save you. So this is a very important advice. Uh, you must understand that when you make mistake, it's okay. But determine to correct yourself. If you do not see it as a danger and you do not correct yourself, you cannot develop the perfection of it. So the understanding needs to be perfected. So this ability uh, to correct your mistake is very important. He said if you don't do that, not only he has no way of helping you, even if Sakyamuni Buddha is around, he also could not save you. That's why in the Buddhist hymn, they always say, uh, No one save you but yourself. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. Buddha merely show the way. And that phrase is very profound and very meaningful. That's why no one help you. But yourself, you have to do it to your own sincerity, your own faith, 
understanding and perseverance. That's why I say three things. Sincerity, faith and perseverance. It will bring forth the way. Then the Buddha is very compassionate. If he can help you and make everybody Samasambada, he will have done it. But nature's law is not like that. It cannot be done. Otherwise, he is full of compassion. He will do it. That's why he can only teach you, show you the way, and guide you along. You have to walk the path yourself to realize the perfection, the awakening, the understanding, and the ultimate transformation. Mm. Then after that, he said, the Dhamma that they learned in the past were all different. This is encapsulated by the phrase, the elder without partiality uh, gives to each of his children a great card, means the supreme vehicle teaching. Despite their difference, they were all given the Mahayana teaching, the supreme vehicle teaching without discrimination. In the great vehicle Dhamma, one includes all. It is universally perfect, universally accessible. Where this is a supreme vehicle Dhamma, it teaches you the complete understanding to become Samasamuddha. Then Shenhua said, what is meant by one includes all? It means the great vehicle Dhamma encompasses all understanding of phenomena. It is complete with everything and every living being can realize or attain it. That's why it is called the great card, which refers to the great supreme vehicle, the ultimate wisdom teaching. So the Buddha says, Sariputta, at that time, the elder without partiality gives to each of his children the three category uh, or group a great card. The Buddha gave the great vehicle Dhamma equally to every living being. There was no partiality and no one was excluded. The Buddha did not teach the great vehicle Dhamma to some privileged beings while denying it to others. Everyone was welcome. For this reason, the Dhamma Flower Sutta, actually it's a wonderful Dhamma Lotus Flower Sutta, unfolds the provisional to reveal the ultimate supreme vehicle teaching. It teaches the wonderful principles of the great vehicle teaching. So this one is very important. Then we move on. Eh? Explaining the levels of the cut, then describing the physical appearance of the cuts, then explaining the source of the cut. So the first part which is describing the physical appearance of the cut, the sutta said, each cut is high, white, adorned with many intervening strands of jewels encircled by railings, and surrounded on four sides by hanging bells. Further, each is covered with a canopy decorated with various rare and precious treasures and strung with jewel cords, from which flower tassel hang down. Every card is furnished with elegant layered mat and red cushion each is yoked to the white ox with lustrous, clear skin and a beautiful body, muscular and, muscular and strong. The ox, the oxen, walk with a steady, even gait, as swift as the wind. Each cart is guided by many servants. So now we go to the commentaries. The Sutta says, each cut is high and white, 
meaning ultimately Shen Hua asks how high and how wide are they high and wide here describe their physical appearance but their high and weave themselves are symbolic so no one can exactly tell or tell exactly how high or how wide they are Kant is just an analogy for the great vehicle teachings or Dhamma. Someone once asked, who is cultivating the great vehicle? Who is cultivating the lesser vehicle? I asked him, how large is the great vehicle? How small is the lesser vehicle? How large does it have to be before it qualifies as great? How small does it have to be before it is considered lesser? Where do you draw the line? The great vehicle is so high that you cannot see its top and so wide that you cannot see its border. High and wide is an analogy for the knowledge and vision of the Tathagata, means the wisdom and virtue of the Tathagata. The knowledge of the Tathagata, which is his wisdom, is the knowledge aspect of all he knows. And the vision of the Tathagata is like the Buddha's eye. With his understanding, there is nothing the Buddha does not know. With his vision, there is nothing he failed to see. The Buddha's knowledge and vision are so broad and deep that horizontally their boundaries encompasses the entire Dhammarayam. And how far does the borders of the Dhammarayam extend? The Dhammarayam is infinite. Nothing goes beyond it. No one can discover the border of the Dhammarayam. Why not? It is because the Dhamma rhyme includes the trichilocosm within it. Can we measure the trichilocosm in terms of number? We cannot. Horizontally, the Tathagata's knowledge and vision are present throughout the entire Dhamma rhyme. Vertically, they plumb the depths of the threefold truth. What is the threefold truth? The empty, the provisional, and the middle way. The threefold truth encompasses all Buddha Dharma. Therefore, the knowledge and vision of the Tathagata are replete with all Buddha Dharma. Thus, Ishkat is high and wide. So this is the first part of the explanation. Then the Sutta says, Ishkat is adorned with many intertwining strand of jewels. There are many different kinds of jewels strand, strung together, adorning this card, making them beautiful. The many jewels are an example of the mind right practices that brings our Dharma body to perfection. So these are the analogy. Yeah? Adorn and intertwine means we must cultivate in order to perfect the mind right practices. That's why I say it's very extensive, this cultivation. Take aeons and aeons and aeons to develop and perfect. If we do not cultivate, we cannot perfect them. We must honestly cultivate the mind right practices. That's why the Supreme Vehicle Way, which is also the Bodhisattva way leading to full perfection of Samasamuddha Hood is very, very extensive. It involves long periods of cultivation. Hmm. Then the commentary continues. Each cut is encircled by railings and surrounded by four sides with hanging bells. So according to the literal teachings or meaning in the text, we will say that each card has railing on all sides. 
The bells on the cards foresight make resonant sounds. These phrases are analogies. Analogies. As the entire chapter consists of analogies, therefore we should not explain the meaning literally. Yeah. So what is mentioned in the sutta is all analogy that carries great meaning and deep meaning. Then the ch- this chapter, a parable, is the hardest chapter in the entire wonderful Dhamma Lotus Flower Sutta to explain. That's why the word parables <laughs> uh, is not pointing direct. It's explained as parables. Uh, then not easy to understand. That's why Shen Hua said this chapter within the entire Sutta, wonderful Dhamma Lotus Flower Sutta, is the most difficult uh, or hardest chapter to explain. It's also the most difficult chapter to understand. However, if you wish to deeply dwell into the principles of the Sutta, Sutra, this is the most valuable and most important chapter, which is very true. If you can understand this chapter, a parable, you will be able to understand the other chapters very easily. Therefore, although this chapter is the most difficult one to explain, to do so is the most worthy, worthwhile, and devil. You could also say that this is the easiest chapter to explain. How is that? Once you understand it, it's easy. <laughs> like I always say, that. when you understand, it's very easy. But when you don't understand, it can be very, very complicated. If you do not understand it, then it's very difficult. In fact, everything works this way, which is very true. Eh? Like I explained to you in the early days. The initial phase of cultivation is already so difficult, and most people don't understand what the Buddha Dhamma is, the true penetrative teaching. So they approach it from what they believe, which is logical. That's why they go and apply the thinking process. They use the thought. So thought-based approach can never realize the true Dhamma, which is beyond thought, beyond mind. That's why to see that itself is not easy. So when you don't have that understanding, you can be trapped for very long. We are everybody thought the only approach is via the thought process. That's why they read, they memorize, they commit to memory. Uh, then they develop the cultivation using thought as the instrument, not knowing that the instrument limits their ability to comprehend and to awaken to the Dhamma which is beyond thought. So thought base itself is already so difficult to penetrate. That's why here what Shen Hua mentioned is very true. Once you understand, it is very easy. That's why when you understand awareness based meditation, it's very easy to understand the teaching and to penetrate the teaching and to realize the wisdom and the truth behind the teaching. But if you do not have this understanding, you can be lost for very, very long, continuously life after life, using thought to try to develop the understanding and the cultivation. So this is a very good example. Then after that, to realize the awareness within, to know that you had two minds is again very difficult, not easy. That's why without all the proper guide, the teaching, you cannot. Then when you have the proper guide and the teaching, then as you train, you may come to the understanding that you can develop the awareness-based meditation to be aware 
and that is just the beginning of true cultivation, of real cultivation. Then you stabilize it, then you develop the ability to cultivate and perfect yourself and transform until finally you develop vast extensive experience and exposure to progress. Then after that you have to continue to cultivate until your nature becomes so different. Uh, and to do that you have to detect the gateway to your nature. That's why all these are not easy. These are like a uh, milestone that you need to clear to achieve to continue to progress. Uh, so initially the first hallmark of winning the hallmark of union which is to realize the state of no thought. To realize your true mind, the pure awareness nature within. That itself is really so difficult. That's why many cultivators of the way are trapped in thought-based approach, meditation. Then after you clear that, you need to search for the awareness nature, stabilize it. And when you can stabilize it, you become heedful. And that is just the beginning of the provisional teaching to realize the sainthood ways enlightenment. Then after that, you have to locate the gateway to assess your nature, to actually perfect the nature's uh, movement and activity so that it can transform your consciousness so that it can lead to the purification of consciousness until your vibration becomes so fine. Finally, the Monday mind collapse. And after the Monday mind collapse, the true mind, which is the super Monday mind, they will arise. Then you need to learn how to use that mind to develop the cultivation further and to stay at the heart all the time and to illuminate that nature uh, until the understanding reach the third stage of Bohimai development means Bohimai that illuminates the nature uh, then after that you move on to cultivate the fourth stage of Bohimai development which is Bohimai that understand clearly and able to renounce samsara. So Bohi mind that renounces samsara is the most important phase, the fourth phase. Yeah. So all these stages, they are not easy and they take a long time, very extensive, but it's meaningful, wonderful. Yeah. So like I always say here, yeah, it's very rewarding, yeah. although it takes a long time, although not easy, but it can be done because those who have gone through, they have the understanding and they can guide us. That's why all the great beings, the Samasambuddha, they are our greatest uh, Kayanamitas. Uh, or what we call uh, the the one that is the true cultivator of the way they have the understanding. Mm. So all this, we will start to develop the understanding then, as per the yellow card that I have given you all, how you should develop affinity with all these great beings, the Samasambhada, yeah. and seek their help, their whatever blessing, protection, and guidance to help us move faster and faster to develop the understanding and the extensive exposure and perfection to realize the ultimate Samasambuddhahood to realize the fifth stage of Bohimai development, which is 
Bohemai that develop the full perfection of the ten perfection to realize the consummate of the Bohemai cultivation. Hmm. Okay, then we continue. Huh? The phrase adorned with many intertwining strands of jewel refer to cultivation of the mind right practices in the formative formative stage resulting in perfection of the mind right virtue at the stage of realization. So this description alone, one sentence, already covers so extensive a practice. As I hear, I say, adorned with many intertwining strands of jewel. Uh, this refers to cultivation of the mind right practices of the initial stages, the formative stages, where all the wisdom, the virtue that is to be perfected, resulting in your ability to perfect means resulting in perfection of the mind right virtue. So the practices or the cultivation of the formative stage will lead to the stability of understanding that enables us to develop the wisdom that is needed for us to develop the perfection of virtue. Like I always say, without wisdom, there is no true virtue. So that is the meaning. Eh? Means this perfection of the mind right virtue at the stage of realization is not just the sainthood way uh, where the mind awakened. No, this one is the stage of realization of Samasambuddhahood. Mm. Encircled by railing represent the Dharani, which is a Sanskrit word. What are the uses of Dharanis? They have countless and limited uses. In fact, Dharani is interpreted in Chinese as meaning total retention. That is the ability to encompass all Dhamma and retain the countless meaning. That's why this word Dharani is a very uh, suitable word. Eh? It carries that meaning of total retention. Means it has the ability to develop all the understanding of the Dhamma and retain their countless meaning. Hmm. Okay, we move on. Another interpretation of Dharani is that it allows one to restrain body, speech, and mind, ensuring that they are free from transgression hmm. and able to uphold all Buddha Dharma. So the phrase encircling encircled by railing indicates that a dharani allows one to practice the mind right good deeds with it one will be able to accomplish all goodness all wholesomeness it obliterates all evil dharani enable one to do no evil and practice every kind of good deeds Therefore, encircling by railing is an analogy for Dharani. Yeah. It's just like what J. Krishnamurti shared. He said the absence of evil is good. That's why the Buddha's advice is also avoid all evil. So when you can avoid all evil, means you are incapable of evil. So the absence of evil is virtue. It's good. Then surrounding are surrounded on four sides by hanging bells. Bells which make a sound when they are struck or when they move are also an analogy for the four types of unobstructed eloquence. 
First one is the unlimited eloquence in speech. A good example of this would be the poems. The return that we talked about earlier on. Although he wanted to hide away as a recluse, Tao Yuan Ming composed this poem. By doing so, he could no longer hide away. People still read his poem today. He was the one who possessed unlimited eloquence in speech. Eloquence in speech means the ability to speak fluently, expressly, and powerfully, bringing delight to one's listener. People who do not believe in the Buddha Dhamma may be persuaded by one's speech to bring forth faith and trust. So unlimited eloquence in speech. The second one is unlimited eloquence eloquent in explaining all phenomena. A single phenomena develops into my right phenomena. Whereas the my right phenomena return to a single phenomena. It is said one root one root divides into many branches or my right branches. Then the my right branches then return to the one root. This describes how the one single principle expands into countless principle and how those countless principles return to the one principles, one fundamental principle. Thus, one is all and all is one, which is very true. This is a very good description. When I was young, I don't know how come I can understand this very fast. Uh, at that time, I was just 17 years old. And I like this word. One is all. All is one. <laughs> because it is from the one that the universe is what it is. Uh, and the universe is what it is. is because of all the individual. Uh, so, any of the individual, when they are not in the equation, the universe will not be what it is today. Even that one can be very insignificant. Let's say he is deluded, he has a lot of suffering, misery, problem. Every life he comes, he brings about suffering, and he entangles himself with suffering, and he hardly do any good. But it is because of his existence over the limitless where he also go through samsara, the my right birth and death. Each and every segment of his life, he introduces that condition. That's why the universe is what it is. It's because he exists and the rest exists. So if he doesn't exist, a lot of this thing will not happen. Yeah. So one is all. All is one. And this is beautiful. The other one that I also came to understand is from zero come one. Then one give birth to infinity. That's why the zero, the void, the emptiness, from there, that nature is started. That's why the stirring of the first thought of ignorance, the Buddha said, incomprehensible is the beginning of the first thought of ignorance. That condition living being to what they are now. So that word is very powerful. From zero, that void, comes that first thought of ignorance. And from there it falls. That's why from zero come one, then one, give birth to the infinity. That's why our four stages of the four circle formation to explain the stages of creation is based on that understanding. Where do the all come from? All comes into being through the accumulation of many ones. Where does the one come from? It appears out of the all. Nothing is fixed and definite. 
So whatever you say will ultimately make sense. I have just described the eloquent in explaining all phenomena. Then the third one is the unlimited eloquence in explaining the meaning. A principle may have many meanings, but may also be considered meaningless. With unlimited eloquence, one can bring forth the meanings of principles. This one is very true. Eh? Then the last one is the unlimited eloquence in teaching others with joy. Those who are not interested in teaching the Dhamma do not give lectures. When those who are interested in teaching give lecture, their explanations are like flowing water. The principles they explain are inexhaustible and endless, for they enjoy teaching the Dhamma. Surrounded on four sides by hanging bells, is an analogy for this four type of unlimited eloquence. That's why as a bodhisattva going through the perfection, ultimately to be a Samasambuddha, you must have all this quality, yeah. the unlimited eloquence. Mm. Okay, we stop here. Huh? I will mark this page. Huh? Okay, we are at page 650. Huh? Today, maybe I will not go to a second session where there is a meditation reporting and the ma question followed by the ma sharing. Maybe I will go to uh, our website, yeah, which is very important. It has been a while I have not gone into our website, which we actually established in February 2017. Eh? Uh, I wanted to do this is because this coming Thursday eh, is our uh, tri-sacred auspicious gathering of Kanyamita, our 20th gathering of Kanyamita. Tri-sacred also because it also marked the second decade of my nature's coming out to share the true Dhamma with the world. Uh, it's 20 years already. The first 10 years was from 2004 to 2014, where Kayamita did for me a very good video. Eh? They call it the video to pay tribute to their teacher, uh, which is also in the website. That one is very good. And now this year is again another very uh, auspicious occasion. Here it marked the second decade, which is the 20th year of me coming out to share the Dhamma with the world, the true Dhamma. And it also marked my 70th birthday. Uh, and because of that, I want to go through the website uh, so that you understand how it started, and it's very, very important, very beautiful and meaningful. When I go through, maybe Kayamita will have better understanding. Uh, Sui will show the website page. You Google B-R-O-T-E-O-H Broteo.com Then this website will come out. Yeah. Then when this website come out, if it's on a handphone, I remember, there's a menu button. You click on menu. Then when you click on menu, the line below, eh? no, 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 this line, uh, uh, you know, your cursor there, the home, about, repository, activity, contact us, gallery, YouTube, all these things will show up. Uh, then you choose which one you want to start viewing. So most people will go to about to find out what this website is all about. Then they decide to view the home page. So go to home page. Yeah. When you click on home page, this page will come out. Yeah. 
So this home page is what we will uh, update on this website. So today I managed to update until the latest, which is our Thursday class dated 10 October and 24 October on unit code 130, 32 and 133, 34. So they are all here. These are the email that I wrote to all the kilometers. So here you have the link, you have the whiteboard note, everything, where every Tuesday class, Thursday class, Sunday class, or whatever sharing that I give when I travel overseas or whatever, like our Wu Tai San trip, our Singapore trip, and all the retreat uh, talks and sharing, they will be uh, like recorded. Then we share it on this information page which we post. That's why we call it the home page. Then this photo is, I remember, on one of our spiritual trip. Eh? So we have changed. This is the second one already. Eh? So this one is uh, still very good. That's why we retain it. Then you look at the archive. Eh? The archive. Eh? So you go down. Eh? Go down, go down. Uh, we started in the year 2017 February, see? Uh, you look at the castle, uh, the uh, 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 Sui with the hand uh, uh, and the arrow. So this is the date where we actually started. And we should thank all those who helped us to prepare all this and make the website a uh, possibility and become what it is today and later on when I go through with you all you will understand why this website is very important uh, and the main people we should thank is actually uh, Brother Jin Hao, Sui An and Brother Lao uh, and together with the group that help out to actually help develop all this, including Sui Deo. Mm. Many of them are involved. Mm. Pama Suri, Brother Tiong, and many others. Uh, and the date is coming to 20 years of me coming out. But the website is only 204. Uh, seven plus year uh, coming to eight year uh, next February. On those seven plus year we have actually did a lot of things and this website is beautiful. A lot of Dhamma information you can extract from it and they are all very penetrative uh, and insightful Dhamma information can help a lot of people. Yeah. And also how I set up the whole thing. Mm. So you follow the month. Eh? Every month the downloaded sharing, they are there. Like February 2179, eh? they're all the way up until yesterday I did the last update which was 14, October 2024, 14 of them. And each of the sharing got two, two talk. Yeah. So actually it's 28. Yeah. So if you develop the understanding, then you know how to search. Then Sui also later on in one of the, uh, I think, link uh, with the, uh, I think, with, with the My Kanyamita thing. Uh, later I will explain. He also did a very good uh, explanation for people who are new to this website. If you want to learn how to use it, he presented a very good one. Mm. Okay, now we go down to the about. Uh, go up, sorry. Uh, about. So this about forward was written by me. Yeah? At that time, Brother Lau, he said, Brother Theo, he said, 
he has helped many Buddhist organization develop all this before. So he said, you have to put up this thing. That was the first time I heard about website, and first time I heard about all this about. Then he said, about means about your website, your organization, and how you want to do it all day. Then it dawned upon me that this is beautiful. And from this, I can explain what my vision was, what I intend to develop, actually. From that day, when Yun Chang came and request, which was 2024, when I make that decision to accept with the three conditions, I already had in mind what I want to do. And until today, that same thing is still moving along the same direction, but we have achieved a lot of the milestone that we supposed to achieve. And technically, I said, what I promised the great being Maitreya, Buddha, and Kwanin, I fulfilled them. Yeah. More or less completed everything. Yeah. And this is beautiful. Mm. So here about, I started off by saying, welcome to Brother Tio's Kayamita website to view a repository of very good and useful Dhamma material and resources. Then, of course, the first section refers to about our teacher, which is about me. So this one happened to be a CD yeah, developed in the year 2014, which was 10 years after my coming out to share the Dhamma with the world. After Yun Chan invited me in 2004, 2014. Yeah. 19 October 2014, just before my birthday, they did this as a tribute to me from Kayamita, produced by Bertil uh, and Sister Pamasri. They are the two main input, and with the help of me, my wife, and of course me Fong, uh, they have to help them <laughs> to to actually uh, put in all the photos or dig for the, from my f photo album, the archive, or the old photo of me when I was young and later when we started the sharing together with all the other activity. Uh, and it was very well compiled. Uh, so you can you click on it? So you go to the website, you click on it, it will play. Uh, no sound. Oh, <laughs> the internet is slow. Hey, I play in my room, it was quite fast. Oh, now Zoom, no wonder. Oh, never mind. You all go back. Ah, okay. See? Namo Buddhaya, Namo Dhammaya, Namo Sanghaya, Namo Kwansi Mphusa. Then we deep gratitude and thanks for Kuan Yin's blessing, protection, and guidance of this one. So, this is a beautiful photo. Eh? Then after that, go on. Eh? Let it run. Huh? Oh, a bit slow. Huh? Oh, it need to buffer. You cannot drag it. Oh, now. Ah, this is the one. Huh? So a tribute to Plateau, huh? from Kevin. You go back and go through easy. Huh? We have the internet is slow when it's on Zoom. Huh? Go back to that. Pause it. Ah, pause it. Huh? Ah, okay. Then you move up. Huh? So this one, you go back and click on it and go through it. You want the video, I think we still have, but I don't know where I put it already. I have to look for it. Huh? Ah, move it up. Okay. So this one is about my CV. Huh? Bertio graduated from the University of Malaya in civil engineering in 1979. He has been a spiritual practitioner come meditator since 1971 when I was in Form 5. Since his retirement in 2001 from his engineering career, he has been sharing his spiritual understanding experience with all those who are keen in their search for true happiness, peace, liberation from birth and death, and all mental suffering to be more 
to become a more virtuous, nobler, and wiser living being. Here is, I retired from my engineering career 201. Then from 2001 to 2004, I actually met a few who came and see me privately, but I haven't officially come out to share. Not until the year 2004 when Yun Chan came. Huh? Mm. Then I continue. It is Bratio's hope that Dhamma friends, spiritual practitioners, seekers of truth, and cultivator of the way will be able to make use of his sharing of the truth to develop a better understanding of life, to help others, and be a great blessing to all of humanity. And he has also counseled and helped many people with severe depression, karmic condition, career, health, marriage, financial separation, and relationship problems to recover beautifully via his sharing of the rather penetrative Dhamma or truth as taught by Sakyamuni Buddha with them. He gives Dhamma talk, conducts Dhamma, come meditation classes, and meditation retreats at various meditation centers and places that invited him. He also conduct weekly meditation come Dhamma class at Wuping Tsingsa, a Mahayana Vihara every Sunday, and at Subang Jaya every Thursday. He also conducted a weekly Dhamma sharing come discussion class with a group of very serious spiritual friends or Kayamitas every Tuesday night at his PJ SS2 house or resident. He also organized and led many spiritual come tour trips to various spiritual way place of importance for his Kayamita. Ratio was invited to present an international seminar paper on life management with meditation titled Experiences and Success at the International Seminar dated 10 to 12 August 2013 held in Bangkok, Thailand. The seminar was co-organized by the World Buddhist University, WBU, the World Fellowship of Buddhists, WFP, and Pipa Livarana uh, Vanaran Mindfulness Center, PMC. So his seminar paper, Success in Life Via Meditation, first edition 2015 can be downloaded from the PDF. Huh? Uh, Chin Hao, you make a note. Huh? The e publish and Mobi, huh? I cannot download now, I don't know what. Huh? Oh, for those people with that device to or oh, to read now. Oh, okay, okay. So it means they must have the device to read the e-publication. Oh, okay, okay, now I know. No wonder I click only the PDF. Uh, so now you all know, uh, you must have the device to read the e-publish or mobi. You call mobi. <coughs> oh, it's a type of file, okay. This one is a very good seminar paper. You want to understand the Buddha Dharma within a very thin booklet. This is the one, very comprehensive and very beautiful. Yeah. It talk about success in life, yeah. both mundane and spiritual. Yeah. And the beauty of the Buddha Dharma and all those things and how it can help living beings yeah, to actually develop the understanding of life, to live life yeah, and to be a blessing to all. And then number two is about our website. Yeah. This one you listen. Yeah. So we move it up. Okay. So, Brother Tios Kayamita, why I call it a Kayamita group? Because I don't want to register an organization. Uh, too messy and not suitable. So, what happened is, I actually gave it a thought and I wrote this out. I said, Brother Tios Kayamita was established by our teacher, which is me. In the year 2004, when Bratio officially accepted Sister Hui Yun Chan's request for him to come out to share his rather special and unique Dhamma understanding with the world, with three simple conditions as follow. 
So this is to prevent unnecessary misunderstanding eh, and protect people's uh, condition to entangle themselves with negative karmic consequences. That's why I set these three conditions eh, to help protect people. The first condition is call it a sincere Dhamma sharing or discussion and not a one-way traffic talk so that there is genuine learning and sharing and no authority is involved. Because most of the time, if I call it a, a Dhamma talk or whatever, it may denote authority uh, because you may think uh, I am a teacher and because you are Kayamita under me, so my teaching has authority over you. That's why in the early day I started by saying we call it Dhamma discussion. That's why towards the end, all the Dhamma discussion part, which is uh, meditation, reporting, Q&A, uh, sharing of the Dhamma uh, in daily life, all this, is the reason why I call it a Dhamma discussion. Mm. So, first is to prevent unnecessary authority on you, because Dhamma is about truth. Truth is to be investigated by the individual. Then the second part is the one that points towards that. The second condition is no right, no wrong, so as to avoid unnecessary argument and misunderstanding via mutual respect for each other's cultivation during the Dhamma discussion or Dhamma sharing session so that this will enable each and every one to inquire on their own, to investigate into the Dhamma. Well, if it's the truth, it will stand up to investigation. Then the third condition is to have an open mind, to listen attentively and take in or make use of whatever that is useful and beneficial to progress along the path of Dhamma. So these three conditions, one set, agreed, then I came out. Yeah. Then I mentioned and explained what this grouping is all about. Vertios Kayamita is an informal grouping of Kayamita, means we are all Kayamitas, which means Dharma friends, spiritual friends, and noble friends who share the same noble vision of walking the path of Dhamma sincerely with great faith to realize the highest human potential or ideal. We are sharing the noble teachings of Sakyamuni Buddha, which is basically wisdom, love and virtue, so that they can all be a blessing to all of humanity and the world. So this is the reason why I develop this Kayanamita grouping uh, and it is an informal one it means you can come and you can go anytime no compulsion no membership fit nothing you no need to really register formally to you just have to be part of the Kayanamita uh. such understanding can be of great benefits for us all to develop the understanding of life so that we, the Kayamitas, can have the ability to cope with the great intricacies and challenges of life that are much needed nowadays, especially so in our today's modern society, where everything is moving at such a fast pace, and life can be rather stressful, hectic, demanding, and at times highly competitive, provocative, and seemingly harsh. Human suffering are very real, and it is happening almost everywhere, even to our youngster nowadays. So over the past decade, since 2004, means 20 years already, two decades, of rather beautiful and very effective Dhamma sharing and spiritual activity, we, the Kayamita, have managed to successfully 
develop a great wealth of Dhamma information and resources. Bracket, a repository of very penetrative and insightful Dhamma material that can be a source of great help and blessing to all those who want to develop a clear understanding of this noble teaching of Sakyamuni Buddha. So it is very sincere intention that this great wealth of Dhamma information and resources can be made available to a wider audience and also to all Kanyamitas who have the affinity and interest to receive them. This is the main intent of me establishing this Relatios Kayamita website with the domain name. Huh? You Google this one, it will come up. Huh? HTTPS colon uh, backslash uh, or slash slash uh, Relatios.com. Huh? And then this is what I try to tell you. Beginner guide for Kayamita website. Huh? May twenty. 20 when Sui just came back from Singapore uh, during FCO, he created this one. So you click on it, uh, but the internet is very slow, Don't no need to do. So Sui sound will come out and explain to you what to do. Uh, then bio data is the same, uh, just now I have read through, uh, it's my CV. Uh, then go down, uh, objective, uh, this one is very important. So. My sincere objective is to have a website for easy access to all the wealth and rather important Dhamma information and resources that we have developed since 2004 so that it can be made available free of charge to all Kayanimitas and those who have the affinity and condition to receive them, also to a wider audience. It is hoped that this wealth of Dhamma information and material can be a source of very penetrative and rather insightful Dhamma guideline needed for cultivators, spiritual practitioners and Dhamma friends to develop the clear understanding and cultivation of the Buddha Dhamma to realize the Buddha's noble teaching. To build up a very strong Kayamita grouping which has the Dhamma so that they can be an effective spiritual force of great virtue, wisdom, and wisdom to be a blessing to all of humanity. Then finally, the follow-up is to implement the above beautiful vision so that this can become a living reality, so that each and every of our Kanyamita can be truly can be a truly transformed Buddhist. Means a Buddhist that has the Dhamma understanding and unshakable faith in the Triple Gem, the Buddha Dhamma and the Sangha. To walk the path of Dhamma with great sincerity and diligence. And to have more noble friends, means noble ones among our Kayamita, that can give guidance and be a blessing to all of humanity. Then overview of Brother Theos Kayamita. This one is very important. The original intent and concept of Kayamita shape so that you understand why this word is very important. So according to the teaching, the Buddha said Kayamita means Dharma friends or spiritual friends or noble friends who walk the path of Dhamma with great sincerity and faith to realize the noble teaching of Sakyamuni Buddha. So this friendship is very unique, where it is based on sincerity, love, and compassion. And our Kayamitas are all very supportive of each other. And they are there to counsel, motivate, guide, and encourage each other to walk the path of Dhamma diligently. There are basically two types of Dhamma friend. Dhamma friend that has realized the Dhamma means they are noble friends. Then the other type is Dhamma friends who are still on the path of cultivation to realize the noble teaching. So these are spiritual friends yeah, and Dhamma friends. Hmm. Both types are termed Dhamma practitioner or cultivator of the Dhamma. Cultivator means they are on different stages of the cultivation. Some of them can be new, 
some can be already quite experienced and some may have already realized the Dhamma. Nevertheless, they are all called Kayanamitas. The, Buddha way, the Buddha's way of introducing this concept of Kayanamita here is very unique because the Buddha said, Noble friends, Kayamita sheep is 100% of the holy life. And he himself is the noble friend par excellent. And this word is very good, par excellent. Hence, he told Venerable Ananda, it is owing to my being a par excellent noble friends of Kayamita to them that living beings subject to birth and death are free from birth. His mission is to share these noble truths, which are the essence of his teaching with living beings, with all living beings, that can understand and receive them. The main purpose is to do away with all the division that had happened within the Buddhist community. When the focus is not there, then we will debate. So, 5.2 is the purpose and intent. Eh? The purpose and intent of this concept of Kayamitashi is to allow us to bring everyone, all Buddhists together, back to a common platform so that all Buddhists, not only just those from SJBA, including all the other Buddhist groups or societies, which at the moment, if I'm not wrong, they all have their own respective vision, mission, and activities. And all these are very good and very important. Nothing wrong. The only thing that I see lacking is the integration part. We have to integrate them into one big and great family, which the Buddha called Kayamita Ship or Dhamma family. We can then, with that, we can then temporarily do away with all the religious and society symbol. Then as Kayamita, we don't have to call ourselves as from SJBA, from Brickfield, Mahavihara, Nalanda, or Santul, or whatever. All this, if we are not careful, can lead to unnecessary division and misunderstanding. And then I explain under 5.3 why it's an informal grouping. Since Bertio's Kayamita is just an informal grouping of Kayamita, hence any Buddhist or free thinker who share our vision can register on this website or join us in our in all our activity. There is also no need for membership fee. All our activities are funded by volunteers and our own Kayamita funds. So we have set up a Kayamita fund. Then Avijja Sutta, you go back and read. Eh? This one is about uh, Avijjame ignorance, Sutta on ignorance. Why you need Kayamitas? Because this Sutta clearly explains the importance of having true noble friends or Kayamitas. Of having true noble friends as Kayamita to realize enlightenment. According to the Buddha, having noble friends as our Kayamita is one of the prerequisites to be an Arya or an enlightened being. It also talk about the factors that will influence ignorance. So to be free from ignorance, one of the main tasks to be free from ignorance is one of the main tasks in cultivation. Yeah. So having Dharma friends, spiritual friends or noble friends is a prerequisite for this task. Hence the importance of Kayamitashi then under the sutta, there are two sequence, eh? the ignorance sequence. You read through, you will understand. Eh? Then the enlightenment sequence also same. The first one is you must associate with good Dharma friends or spiritual friends. That is the first step to enlightenment, the enlightenment sequence. Then you have that, you will have opportunity time to listen to the true Dhamma. Then when you constantly listen to the true Dhamma, you will have faith in the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Then after that, you will have wise consideration or Yoniso Manaskara, the initial wisdom. 
We are when you listen, you reflect, you contemplate, you develop first, second turning wisdom. Then sometimes you go retreat, you meditate, third turning wisdom. Then with the initial wisdom, Yoniso Manaskara develop. Step five will come to be. Step five is the Tit Sampajana, mindfulness and clear comprehension. And for that to happen, you must have the initial wisdom to stabilize your mind so that you will not stir and react to sense experience like before. So that the spiritual faculty starts to develop. Then you will have more moments of peace, space between thought, the mind that is at peace, not reacting, not stirring. Mm. Then with that, the direct seeing, the awakening, the penetrative insight, you can see things as they are. You can insight into phenomena. You can silence your mind to develop the wisdom to understand the way things are. So all this lead to wisdom. Then when you have this Sati and Sambhajana together with the Yoniso Manaskara and the wisdom developed, what happens is you become an Arya. You will have sense restraint. Step six is sense restraint. Then once you have sense restraint, you can cultivate the three way of right conduct, which is under the noble evopa, right view leading to right thought, right speech, right action, and right livelihood. Then the four right effort. So all this will develop the first and second stage of sainthood, enlightenment. So step seven, the three ways of good conduct or right conduct will manifest on its own. Yeah. Then after that, only you cultivate the four foundations of mindfulness. That's why under the four foundations of mindfulness, Satipatthana uh, cultivation, is mentioned, if you do this, it will lead to the awakening, and you will realize at least anagamanship, third stage of same word, if they are still little avijja or ignorant there the last five factors. Otherwise, you become Arahant. Then after that, as you cultivate the four foundations of mindfulness, the seven factor, factors of enlightenment keep on arising, and that is step nine. And when you see the seven step of, uh, seven factors of enlightenment keep on arising, then you know you're on the right path. You have not deviated. And this is the way to enlightenment. That's why step ten is the final realization. True knowledge, which is vija, leading to enlightenment. So this is the avijja sutta enlightenment cycle, and this is the reason why I choose kayamita ship, so that it can lead to all this. Eh? Then under note, again you can see association with good dharma friends or spiritual friends or kayamita is a prerequisite needed to arrive at that path that ends with true knowledge of vijja, enlightenment. This is the reason why the Buddha clearly instructed us. We are saying to Venerable Ananda, having Dhamma friends or Kayamita is 100% of the holy life. Hence, developing and promoting true Kayamita among all Buddhists within the Buddhist community is most important. Uh, that number seven is a very good one. This is our core attributes and values. So, Bratios Kayamita's core attributes and values, you must read through this so that you understand. First is to heed the advice of the Buddha to develop a clear understanding of the below words of wisdom spoken by him. <coughs> Extract from Dhammapada verse. So, the important Dhamma Padavas are verse 1, verse 2, verse 1 and 3, which I have gone through many times to you all. Eh? You go back and read yourself. Eh? Mind is a forerunner, all things and all those things. Then the next part is Dhamma Pada verse on Apamada Vaga, heedfulness. Verse 21, 22, 23. This has been elaborated and taught many times. Eh? You go through yourself. Then the final advice of the Buddha which he said, strive on with heedfulness. That was the reason why heedfulness is most important. 
you only strive after you have developed heedfulness. Then number two is to have Dhamma friends or noble friends to walk the path of Dhamma with great sincerity, faith, and perseverance to realize the noble teaching of the Buddha, leading to personal transformation, character-wise, personality-wise, and wisdom-wise. Then number three, the third attribute is to strive on with heedfulness with great determination to be ever mindful and constantly meditative to cultivate the Noble Eightfold Path as taught by the Buddha. Then after that, number four is to be ever mindful to keep the five precepts advised by the Buddha diligently. Then number five, to develop unshakable faith in Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha via avoiding the foolish and the healers and constantly associating with the wise and virtuous. Then number six, to cultivate diligently the understanding of the following essential dhamma which we have gone through, huh? the three evil roots, five daily contemplations, five spiritual faculty, and the opposite five mental hindrance, the three right view, kama niyama, citta niyama, dhamma niyama, the four noble truth, the dwelling, patija samopada, four noble truth, and what constitute right thought, right speech, and right action, and right living. Then the four foundation of mindfulness, seven factors of enlightenment. Mm. Then finally is Kayamita funds. The setting up of the Tuesday class and Thursday class Kayamita fund was first mooted by our teacher, Pratio, in the year 2005 with the sole purpose of helping all Kayamita to have the special condition to cultivate along the path of Dhamma. This fund are unique because only this Kayamita fund can donate towards the following goodness and wholesomeness done by us. Donate towards the cost of producing all the Dhamma publication material, Dhamma notes needed for classes and sharing, and also for di- free distribution to Kayamitas and others. Cost of all stationary whiteboard writing and cleaning material, recording set, recorders and microphone etc that is needed for us to conduct our Dhamma classes and sharing then donates towards the following wholesome courses as suggested by me and other Kayamitas so towards spiritual trip common fund to partake in all their wholesome activity perform while on such trip then meditation retreat common fund to partake in all the wholesomeness a group then way place that we have affinity with, like uh, Ananda Giri, Hermitage, AJBA, Sumero, Klang, Mangala Lodge, Kampa, etc. Then Ananda Giri, Hermitage, and AJBA Education and Building Funds. Then wave to participate in their annual wholesomeness done by them, their annual Katina offering to all the way place all over the world and the printing of appropriate Dhamma book for free distribution and also to church organization that did a lot of wholesomeness. Then Cameron Highland Sampo Temple or Sampo Triple Jam Temple and also their Stupa Fund. Then cost of printing and publication of Dhamma book and transcript and notes produced by me for free distribution, then miscellaneous donation deemed appropriate by me and other Kayamitas. So the above Kayamita fund wholesomeness, listen to this, huh? together with the other wholesomeness that can arise, we are joining any of our weekly session or Dhamma class. And spiritual activity can bring forth great causes and conditions for all Kayamitas to have the special merits and blessing to walk the path of Dhamma much more successfully and with ease. That's why you realize a lot of Kayamita progress is because of this Kayamita fund. So this is the whole thing. Yeah? So this Thursday I will cut short, yeah? otherwise not enough time. So with this, at least it's recorded, you all can listen to it. Tomorrow hopefully it can come out. Yeah? before the Thursday class. Uh, so so we got to work on it. Uh. So with this I will end. Uh. Let us rejoice. Sadu Sadu Sadu. So now at least you all understand uh, how all this 
Kilometer grouping was set up. Uh, how our website, everything, and the beauty of it, and all the wholesomeness that can actually uh, manifest from all this. That's why all kilometers will help out in one way or another. They are really very wholesome. Uh, and these merits, they are really priceless. Uh, immeasurable, uh, limitless. Uh, because the website will go on very long and a lot of the sharing can be very powerful and very useful. Uh, and it's very penetrative and insightful. Mm. Okay, now we will share merit and transfer merits, then we will end. Akasata Chobumata Deva Naga Mahindika Punyang tang anamo di tua, cirang rakan tu lokasa sana, eta wata camehi sampadan punya sampadan, sabe dewa anamo dan tu sabe sampati sidia, idang minya tinang hotu sukita hontunya teo, idang minya tinang hotu sukita hontunya teo. Idang minya tinang ho tu sugita hontunya teyo. Devo asadu kalina sasa sampati hito cha. Fito bawa tu loko cha. Raja bawa tu dami ko. Ibina punyang kamina. Mami bala samagamo. Satang samagamo ho tu. Yawa Nivana Patiya Sadhu 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 Okay, you all can now pay respect mindfully to Lord Buddha, Konyin Bodhisattva and all the worthy ones. Eh? There we end. Eh? Thank you.